I'm called, it's a tea bag book and the reason it's a tea bag book is it's in the shape of a tea bag and it's the simplest easiest book you will ever make I promise I promise I promise so mine is closed has a closure this is like the the, the piece that you dunk dunk in the tea this is like a vintage napkin untie it and then inside it is an accordion book little accordion book so I think most of the tea bag books that you see have only got one little fold but you know to say I wasn't gonna um follow the rules so there we go so um I'm gonna be using let's just put that there for one second if you're in the US you probably know um Somerset Studio did I say Somerset Magazine? I'm sorry, Somerset Studio. I'm getting confused. Somerset Studio is a mixed media um, magazine. Um, it's published by Stampington and Company. Um, I'm sure you can get it in the UK too. You probably just have to um, order it or kind of look, you know, in um, larger bookshops. Anyway, they have gorgeous, gorgeous, lots of eye candy, lots of different projects and things. Really nice. Um, but each month they include artist papers. I've written these all out actually. They include artist papers that you can pull out um, and use. So sadly, it doesn't tell you who the artist is actually, which I, is kind of a, which is too bad. Um, so it just says Stampington artist papers, but um, the papers are really nice and kind of my cup of tea and probably the cup of tea of a few of you. So um, yeah, it's just too bad though they don't credit the artist who made them. Maybe it is on their website because I would like to credit the artist who made this cute face. So um, I've just been looking at these papers for a while and I thought, oh, these would be good to use this month. Um, they are kind of mostly plain on the back with a little bit of um, worse. So I'm actually gonna cover those up, but um, I'm gonna use one of these to make my book. So let's just get that magazine out of the way. Um, what month is that magazine, says Anne? Oh, this is an older one. This is um, August, September, October of last year. So the autumn of last year, August, September, October 2020. You can, um, I think you can buy back issues though. So they're not cheap. I will say they're not cheap, but they're the kind of magazines you don't throw away. So to make this book, you're going to need a long strip of paper. So the... Um, the size doesn't really matter. I'm going to tell you what size I'm using, but it's just a long strip of paper. So depending on how big or small you would like your book. This book here measures, let me tell you. Oh, hang on one tick. I'm going to grab my ruler. Sorry about that, I have my ruler. On the other side of the room, this book measures four inches high by about three and three quarters across. Just grab a piece of paper. So this one, I'm just gonna cut this in half. Where are we? I'm just gonna use a, um, let me come out a little bit. I'm gonna use my 12 inch Fiskars paper cutter this I don't use this very often but honestly it's useful so this is eight inches across so I'm just going to cut it in half again the uh, measurements aren't super important so I'm going to make so this my cover one of these my cover so this is four inches across and it is almost um, 11 inches long so you know if you've got an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that would work pretty good so I'm going to make the cover first, so the shell of the book, it's kind of this piece here. I'm taking just this one piece of paper and all I'm going to do, I'm going to fold it in half. So this, in terms of paper weight, this is like um, a patterned cardstock weight. Oh yes, someone's already asked that. I figured you would ask that. So, you know, patterned scrapbook paper, 
card stock about 110 pounds it's like that kind of weight it's not um it's not copy of paper weight it's like patterned paper weight so it's fairly sturdy oh look at that that wasn't cut very square was it I'm very happy with that hmm. i'm gonna use this one instead you see that's the downside of using the paper cutter it's not very square so i'm not happy so i'm gonna recut that i'm gonna use a piece of paper I'm going to cut it in half properly. Let me just cut this in half, folks. Sorry. You know how picky I am. Picky, picky. If you start out, seriously, if you start out with an accordion book that's not square, like there's just no point because it's going to be a disaster. Right. I'm going to cut this. Start again. Is this square? Yeah, that's square. Oh, that's not that great, actually. That's okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to fold this long piece in half like that. Give it a bone fold. We're going to open it up. And then I'm going to score. I'm actually going to open it up this way so you can see it. And because this is very patterned and you might not be able to see it. I'm going to take my, um, so this is a brass spacer, which is um, a half inch wide. Um, you do not need a brass spacer. You could, a really good tool actually would be to use, um, a really good tool to use would be a quilting ruler. You're going to score from this fold at a half inch. And you're going to do that three times. So I'm scoring here. I'm going to score once. I'm going to score twice. Yes, this is a butter knife. Twice. My paper's folded over. Okay. I can show you again with another piece if you'd like. Score it three times. Like that. I'm not worrying about paper grain here, folks. So, you know, in an ideal world, yes, the paper grain would run this way, but when we're using pattern papers like this, you can't always um, guarantee and so you know what I'm going to give myself a pass so I fold it in half lengthways and I scored one two three times and I'm going to open up my book and I'm going to fold it concertina style so that the front page faces out so just like this if you have questions I shall look at the comments in a moment so now we have a little concertina book. Um, let me see if there's any questions. Oh, Lisa Ann says she has a 12 inch scoreboard. Oh, that's a good idea. I need to get one of those. Yes, it's a butter knife. I usually use a um, paper knife, but it's um, across the room. So yeah, it's a butter knife because it's, you know, it's blunt. So. <laughs> I love these knives, they're so useful. Okay. All right, but there's nothing much tea baggy about this, right? So in order to make this tea baggy, I'm going to cut off two triangles from the edge there. Um, I'm going to make them about, oh, I don't know, I think I'm going to make them about three quarter inch. So this is my quarter inch spacer, but just use your quarter ruler. And we're not going to put a link in for these because Hollanders is not currently selling them. They've been out of stock for ages. So I'm looking into new suppliers for these. Um, and we may wind up just trying to stock them ourselves. Maybe I could talk to Dee Dee about that, actually, because these would be really popular. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a very faint line here. A faint line here to make a square in the corner. So... This is if you want your triangles to be even, 
which I kind of do because you know I'm fussy. Oops. If you don't want your triangles to be even, you can just eyeball it, which is just peachy. So in the corner here, I've got two squares that I made. So three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch. Just going to open this up, making sure these edges are lined up. And then snip to make my little tea bag shape. Throw away those bits and pieces. We can erase this if you like, but um, we're gonna actually we're gonna cover it up so we don't, we don't need, need to erase it. So then you have your little tea bag shape, and we need to um, cut the hole. So again, feel free to eyeball it. If you do not want to eyeball it, then give it a little measure. I'm going to measure on this short piece here. So this short piece is two and a half. So we want it to be at about. Actually, no. You know what? I'm going to measure the long piece. I'm going to measure about there. So around two. I want it around here. So around there. And then I'm using a cropper dial, but you know, you use whatever hole punch you have. Line up the edges so it's even, and then just go in and punch a hole wherever you feel is appropriate. The halfway point. So there you have your base for a cute little tea bag book. And then we're going to um, decorate it. If you want to watch me decorate it, you can. Uh, Jim said I missed this. Is it um, recorded? Yes, it is. Oh, Maria says um, Claudia from Colorways has these spaces. I think hers are uh, acrylic, right? But still. Anita says some hobby stores carry brass spaces. Dee Dee says fussy is a good word. She's glad she picked up some neater details from it. Yeah, I know. Honestly, I just can't help myself. I just, I just want to be just right. So, um, if you, um, would you like me to show you how I decorate this book or are you all set? You can just tell me in the comments if you are all set, because it is like a super easy book, right? If you're all set. I can just go on my merry way. But if you would like me to show you how I decorate it, um, let me know in the comments while I clear away my tools. Um, I can do, like I say, I could quickly show you if you are interested. Um, let me see. I'm just reading the comments. Volcano Arts has metal spaces. Ooh, great. Okay, Carol, I'm going to check that out because that would be fantastic. You do want me to decorate it? Okay. DV8, please, says <laughs> DV8. Yes, you want to see? Okay, I will show you how I decorate this. It's But it, this is not difficult. <laughs> this is just like a glue stick and paper, folks. Um, what I did notice, though, is because um, I went against the grain on this so you know I broke the rules and I went against the grain um, I'm going to reinforce this um, this accordion a little bit so there's lots of ways you could reinforce the accordion we could just make a second book and plop it on the top right just to reinforce it we could also um, put some masking tape I have decided to get out my little washi tape collection and I'm going to um, reinforce the accordion with some washi tape strips and you can kind of see them in here this washi tape right in here. So I'm going to go over this, um, these accordions with some wash tape and I'm going to um, like overlap them and um, kind of go across the score lines. I'm going to use, I'm going to, um, it's best to repeat, to use the same ones a couple of times so that you get some kind of consistency going. If you, you know your design. Does this actually work with this? Yeah, it does. So I'm choosing it because um, this kind of text and the colours work with this cover. So I originally was going to do this cover, right? But change my mind because it wasn't square. Let's just cover up these um, score lines. Let's just reinforce them a little bit. Let's see what other ones are going to go with this. Um, Oh my goodness, look, <laughs> look at these lovely 
um, washi tapes. These are from um, Unwow Studios, which we have a um, link to put in the comments. I think these, where's my other one from Unwow? I love them. Can't find the one. Oh, here it is. Oh, actually, this is my favorite one. Aren't they beautiful? I don't know if they're in stock at the moment. But there we go. So I'm reinforcing the um, spine with some wash tape. What else would you reinforce your spine with if you were doing this? Is there something, another kind of product you might use to do this? I'm going to do one more. Um, I do really like this one, but I want to do something a bit different. What goes with this? There's lots of text in this, isn't there? This blue one with text. Please don't ask me where I got this blue one with text. I can't remember. It might have been, mm, I don't know where it was from. Who knows? Jet pens, maybe? I don't know. Etsy? I don't know. Okay. That looks kind of nice. So I'm going to trim that up. Obviously, I don't want those. So you could fold them over onto the front if you wanted. My little get rid of those. That's my, my trash can. I'm gonna have bits of this stuck to me all day, aren't I? And so yeah, let me know in the comments how how you would reinforce it. Tyvek. Oh, that's a good idea. Barbie says I make it sound so easy. I promise you it's not difficult. Um so um, Anne would use Tyvek, love it, love it, love it. Um, Mandy would use rice paper. She might also use tea bag papers, nice. Ali would use, um, yes, you could glue paper strips. Yeah, sure. Yeah, anything to um, kind of just give it a little bit of extra um, structure. Now I'm gonna refold these. Um, whatever they're called, refold these score lines. So that looks kind of cute, right? And now I'm going to cover this up. So maybe, so I could use, um, I could use the same paper on the inside, but mm, that would be pretty boring, I think. So we're going to use a different paper. So let's, um, going to keep a couple of these washi tapes out because um, we want to repeat them on the cover lose the washi tape for now um so when you kind of make a book like this you want to try and repeat elements and so that you get more of a um kind of piece cohesive look we're gonna risk this i'm gonna risk this so to line the inside you're just gonna cut paper which is the same width which is four inches for this Just that go it does now and then we're going to cut this. We're just going to glue some paper on the inside just to. And what am I going to use? Plain old glue stick. Plain glue stick just to glue this down. And I'm going to glue this sort of reinforcing end paper. I'm going to glue it right up to that score line. So I'm covering up some of the washi tape, but that's going to give me even more reinforcement, right? Cover up both ends. Trim off the excess. There we go. Ooh, medical paper, medical tape. Oh. Now that's a good idea, Barbara. Um, Angela says the book cover uses Diane Adams. Oh, great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, like I say, I, I wish um, Stan Pinton would credit them um, on the actual back of the paper because, well, it just seems, it seems fair, right? So then let's just do one on the other side. I'm sure it's on their website. So this is just an acid free um, glue stick. I like this one. So um, let's see. Well, now we're going to butt it right up to that um, first score line. 
This is pretty paper. And the reason we use glue stick is because these are thinner, um, these are lighter weight papers and it's a dry glue, but you could also use a wet glue if you wanted to. Um, I just, the less moisture in these, particularly in these small books, the better really for me. Okay. Do we need extra glue? I might need a little bit of extra glue in there. There we go. Um, let me see what the comments. Your glue stick is very sticky, says Anita. Oh, well, that's kind of good, right? Okay, so now we have our little tea bag structure. Oops, oh, hold on, that's, that needs to be adjusted a little bit. You know what, this didn't go right up to the edge, so I'm just gonna trim a little bit. It went beyond the edge. This is to prove to you that I do make mistakes, you know, all the flame in time. There we go. That folds over nicely now. Okay, so we have a little tea bag shaped book. Let's re make that hole. So you don't have to use one of these crocodiles if you don't want to, just any kind of hole punch will be fine. I'm sure you have something in your stash of tools. Okay. The glue on the table there um, and now we're just going to make some little accordion pieces to go inside so we can make one two three three little accordion panels to go inside you could also um sew in uh, little um, signatures here if you wanted to with a pamphlet stitch but i instead i glued three panels on the alternating um, alternating flaps of the accordion. And the sides of these panels, they have to be the same height as the book. So if this book is four inches high, your panel will be four inches high. And then I made mine vary in width. So you can see the, the um, one in the back is longer, the middle one is middle sized, and then the one in the front is smaller. It's actually a little bit shorter, but um, so I would, I would make them as tall as the book, or you could even make them a different height so that they kind of staggered, like almost like a tunnel book effect. Um, but you don't want to go any taller than the height of the um, book base, because otherwise they'll poke out the top. Unless, of course, that is your plan. So I think for my pages, this isn't really going to work, but this is, ooh, actually, this is quite nice. These are quite nice. I think I'll use these. So I'm going to cut my pages four inches high. So it'll be, they're going in like this, four inches this way. Let's cut them four inches high. And then um, I'm going to put them, glue them in with double stick tape. But um, you may want to decorate them first. So four inches high. Um, I decorated mine with some quotes because I like words and quotes. Nice, I like these. Well, I like the fact they've got like just a piece of a um, photograph on them. And then for the width, let's measure this. I'm going to make them as wide as just so they go up to the beginning of the flap. So just to here. I'm going to make them that wide. You could shape them to the shape of the tag, I suppose. But um, so this is going to be three inches. So let's cut these to three inches. I just want to keep them rectangular. Hopefully. How are you liking the new camera, by the way? It's my new camera. Hopefully you can see quite well. It's in focus. I got this new camera for the... Um, bookmaker collective weekend that we just had last weekend and if you are joining us from there thank you very much 
for joining me here today. We had a lot of fun and we have five classes left. So but mine is done and I'm so happy. I get to relax. So I just cut these without really paying attention to what was on the front because I sort of like the serendipity. So you're going to um, decorate them in any way that you like and then we're going to double stick tape them on. Um, what kind of thing would I like to do on mine? I did have a plan. I did have a plan, she says. Um, let's see. So I am... Um, on this one, I really before I put on my words, I really like to just kind of give it a border. So I might give this like a, a messy, scribbly border like this. You do kind of want to add some of your own personality, right, to the, to the panels. So you could um, double do these double sided if you wanted to. I'm not going to. Just going to cover this up. I might add. You know, some little pieces of washi tape before I glue them down. Some of the ones that um, you know we used on the inside. I also might do um, might do a little bit of mark making, like maybe just some little marks on here. Just add a little personality to this. I think I'll do my little marks here. So this is a black Posca paint pen. Mm, I think I'll put a little bit of this washi tape on here. So I'm just trying to make these papers a little bit like my own. Do you know what I mean? Because they are someone else's patterned papers. Um, where should we? We should do the marks in white. Oh, don't like that. Do them so that one was like that. Let's do these on this edge. Marks. And then I'm not going to do this on camera, but I would then take um, probably a um, fountain pen and write whatever words on here I was going to write. And then I'm going to now this is my favourite double stick tape, it is um, a quarter inch double stick tape and it's from um, a company called Lawn Fawn, L-A-W-N-F-A-W-N and I get it from Simon Says um, Stamps and it's really inexpensive, it's like five bucks with this huge long roll of double stick tape. So I'm going to pop my accordion panels in. Are there any questions? Let me see, thank you, someone said the size. Oh, I think someone's answered that. Thank you. Actually, it's a camera mic. Both great. Oh, good. Okay. I'm going to slide these in here. So what order? I think I'm going to do this one first. So this, let's come in a bit closer so you can see. This panel is going to sit right here on that first accordion. Let's do that. So does anyone plan to make one of these? And if you do, what kind of, what theme are you going to use? I'm curious to know if you're going to use some kind of pattern or theme that you, um, is on your mind at the moment. I'm just going to let it um, move the back in. Let's see the double stick tape there. We're just going to let your, um, and it evolve. Make sure, you know, because in case, it, just in case it's not exactly the height of the book, um, make sure it's lined up with that bottom um, edge so that when you sit it on the table, it, you know, it stands up. There you go. So that's the first panel and the first accordion. And then the second panel is going to go right here. It faces the same way. So this is almost like a mini flag book, right? Just make sure it shuts okay. Yep, shuts great. That comes to there. Then we're going to put something on the front and call it good. So on the front of the um, sample book, I use um, some, I think they are. Um, what do you call it? Not wood chip. Mm, chipboard, chipboard, wood chip. Chipboard words. 
Okay, so let's, hopefully you can see that. We're gonna slide that in here. I'm gonna line it up on the bottom. Let's give it a squeeze, double stick tape. And then panel number two. So let's put on panel number three. Any questions? Thank you for putting the link in for the double stick tape. Um, oh, so Fran says she's just made a quick uh, version with um, a magazine image. It's a good idea. Yeah, good idea, Fran. So then we're going to slide the last one in. Sometimes I just like to rub this down with. Um, fold and then the backing peels off it peels off really easily because you know some of them you're there for like a week because I mean I don't know about you but I don't have manicured nails I barely have any nails at all so sometimes I'm there for like a week trying to get that backing off the double stick tape so if you need to just give these a bone fold if you feel like they need to be a bit more secure so there we have our base let me come out a little bit we have our base so let's so I'm got, I'd like to tie this together before I um, decorate the front. And I am going to use a, um, this is a vintage napkin that I got from a, I don't know, in the States. So it's got like a stain on it or something. So um, you know, I'm just going to work around that. I'm actually going to take a piece of um, some pair of scissors and just, I don't think this um, will rip. I tried last night and it didn't rip very well. So I'll just use a piece of this. We'll pop some, I'll pop some of this um, napkin into this month's prize box as well. I think that might be fun. So this is the front. This isn't quite lined up here. I'm not liking that. So I'm just going to give that a little trim. There we go. Let's tie this up and then let's just do something quickly on the front to make it cute. Sure, this is the front all right let's do something cute so i um love these words from um these are also from unwell studios where i got this lovely washi tape um so she does great um oh, why, why can't i remember the word chipboard i can't remember the word chipboard words so um this one here what did we do here we did trust for this one and um the book on this book we're going to do fly i just put some gesso on this and then used my Oscar paint pen to make it white but they all come in this brown color but um there are tons of really great words thankful grateful is another one i've got here what's this other one i think this one's inspire so they're quite delicate um but they're great for book covers so um um mickey will pop a link into the main store there so let's let's just I might, let's see, let's put something on this cover. It's kind of interesting because I want this to pop because that's going to kind of disappear right like that. So I want something probably dark, right? I'm, I'm, li I'm making this up, by the way. I haven't, I haven't pre-planned this. Do you want something dark or light? I don't know. Oh, I do know actually what I want. I want a piece of book paper. Okay, let's just find some old pieces of... This really, this is live, folks, by the way. You can tell this is live. Just use an old piece of this journal. Let's use that and um, maybe an old book. Here we go. Piece of old book. Oh, yes, I like that. Let's put this on the cover. Let's. Um, some ink on this and then I think we'll be good. Let's use my notes, shall we? Here's the thingy. Let me use this blender tool. 
schon. Let's make this look a little old, right? Let's glue this on. Anyone's interested? Uh, this is one of the Tim Holtz blender tools, I believe. People always ask me this. So do I want the book this way? I think we'll do the book this way, because this is, or this way. I don't know. This, let's do it this way for a change. Oh, I like this way. Let's rub this down. Then there's my words. Let's pop our words on here. I think that we need to bring in those marks from the inside. A little bit like those, and then um, so we do the scribbling that we did on the on the um, little cards. Put some bits of washi on here. Like that. Oops. Might find some interesting words on here. I was waiting for some further directions. Oh, interesting. Uh, I'll find something interesting from here in a minute. Um, but let's pop these words on. I might even um, just outline them a little bit with my black Posca. So these are just uh, Posca paint pens, 0.9 millimeters. There we go. In the a bit. And then to attach it, I'm going to use uh, PVA in this very thin um, applicator bottle. Which... Okay, uh, let's see if there's any questions. Um, this is a pencil, just a plain pencil. But isn't it cute? It's pale blue and I have a cream one and I have a pink one too. They're just um, pencils, regular pencils. So let's put some, so this grungy look might not be your cup of tea, it's kind of mine, but you can decorate your book however you would like. And remember to post in the Facebook group or on Instagram so we can see them and give you lots of love. Um, this here, I believe this was given to me by Mandy. Oh, I like that. So there's a little bit of glue there, but it'll dry clear. So that's no problem. And then I do have these words here, but I don't think any of them are going to be what I'm looking for. These are like some Tim Holtz words. but I, I yeah. guess I could put wings on here, but I think I'm going to uh, read this and try and find something kind of interesting from here um, to, to put onto the, the front here. So I'm not going to kind of rush that because whoever... Um, wins the um, monthly drawing we'll get this little book so we don't want to i don't want to rush it so that there we go and then um, i keep a little pin in here to make sure that it doesn't um, dry out and stick that on the top okay well you my desk is a complete mess so there we have our little tea bag book it opens up like this open up the Mm, can't open it. I've got um, glue on my fingers, that's why. Let's try and open it with the phone folder. There we go. Let's open up a little book. Oh, apparently, there we are. So there it is. It's closed with the vintage napkin. You can see the accordion spine right there. You could also put your washi on the outside if you wanted, or whatever you're going to use to reinforce the spine. But we can see ours is on the inside. There, we've got our three accordion panels. There you go, a little tea bag book. Much fun is that. I'm going to leave this, to, I'm going to put this under some weights just to press this down and um, let this dry. So, thank you. Yes, it was fun. Let's see. Um, any uh, questions? I'm going to flip the camera around. Um, just kind of come in so you can see. Okay, one more time. Hopefully there's nothing 
Hopefully that was pretty straightforward. So if there's any questions, doesn't look like there are. Okay, let me switch this around so we can see you. Who is going to make the book later? That's what I want to know. Okay, uh, there we go. All right, there we go. Oh, I'm going to turn this light off though because that is just way too bright. There we go. Oh, you're welcome, Cheryl. Estimate when this will be on YouTube. Um, probably not until this afternoon. Um, who asked me that? Meg. Um, just because um, it takes a little while to render. I have to download it and compress it and then upload it. So it takes a little bit of time um, to do that. So uh, it's But it's available immediately on Facebook as a recording, like straight away. Just with um, YouTube, we have to do a little bit of editing first. Sharon's going to make one today. Oh, thank you, Daisy. Peaceful. <laughs> what colours are my Tim Holtz? Yeah, I can tell you that. Um, vintage photo and antique linen. They're the ones I just I reach for all the time. I mean, I have a bunch of the colours, but um, yeah. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, it's it is a jumping off point. Like your your um your style probably isn't my style, but it doesn't matter, right? It's a it's a book structure that you can um kind of do with whatever you would like. So um, uh, Tanya's going to put some pockets. Oh, to hold tea bags. That's a ooh, that's a good idea, Tanya. Oh, I love that idea of putting like some pockets there. Love me some pockets or like some mini envelopes would be fun. Oh, yeah, some like little glassine envelopes or sort of vellum envelopes. That would be cute. Or even some kind of vintagey envelopes. Some you know old with old um, stamps on them. Oh. There's so many things you can do. Mandy says uh, there are more important since there is nothing more important than taxes on my to do list. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. Um, Mandy might be doing calendar pages. That's a great idea. Love calendar pages. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jane. Gosh, she's so good. Thank you, Jane. So um, on this one, folks, I did some. Oh, pff, hold on. We switched the camera around. I assume you can see me. See my hands. Um, on this one, I did some uh, machine stitching. Oops, light's not on. I did some machine stitching. Um, here we go. Um, so it wasn't um, it wasn't structural though. I just uh, went around with my sewing machine and just did some uh, running stitch. Thank you, Jane. I wasn't. Um, I forgot completely. Forgot about that. So yeah, you can see around here. I just did some running stitch. My regular sewing machine. I left my threads loose, um, but it wasn't um, it wasn't a structural part of the book. It was just decorative. So and I just left left all the threads. So um, and you can see in this first one too. I did a similar thing with the the mark making and some of the washi tape too, and um, some of the scribbling as well, just to kind of tie in the papers. So thank you, Jane. I forgot about that. But yes, just um, I'm sure you don't want to see my um, or hear my sewing machine going, right? There we are. Thanks, Jane. Um, Anne says the words, they're um, like chipboard, um, Anne, and they're from Um Wow Studios. And they're really, she has a ton of really nice uh, words over there. So Um Wow Studios. Um, Yes, tea bags in the pockets. Uh, Susan missed the beginning. That's okay. You can just go back and look at the video. Um, oh, Sandy's got lots of grandbabies, so it gives her lots of good photo opportunities. Let's turn this light off. Ooh, so bright. Chipboard, yeah. Thank you, Mickey. Mickey just um, included a link to the words, so thank you. What would we do without Mickey, folks, honestly? All right. Um, any other questions? Oh, Susan's going to go get a shot. Well, her husband's going to go get the shot. Excellent. Yay. We'll all be vaccinated soon, folks. Um, any other questions? Um, do you have questions about this month's um, tea challenge or the five-day challenge? Um, let me just pop up the five-day challenge one more time. Uh, if you haven't joined us, if you haven't signed up for the five-day challenge, it starts on Monday. So um, if you haven't joined, please do, because it's going to be super fun. Oh, and I got the book. While I was getting my other things, um, this is the book we're going to be making. Um, 
it doesn't have to be cork. In fact, the one in the in the um, video is has got a paper cover, not cork. But um, it is a kind of Coptic stitch book. In fact, if you, um, I can help you see that a bit closer. Come to think of it, if I just switch my camera around, you can see it a little bit better. Um, this is the book that we'll be making, and. The really nice thing about this is the um, rows of stitching. Do you know how normally you get the two yucky rows at the end when you do a Coptic stitch? With this two needle version, all your rows are identical and they look um, kind of nice and neat. So, because you know me, I like neat. So that's the advantage of this book. And it's um, it's not a hard cover. It's sort of semi soft cover. We've right, reinforced the the cover so you don't need any book board you just need um, three sheets of a uh, watercolor paper or printmaking paper so and we tear the edges so there's actually not a ton of measuring in this book there's very little measuring in the book which is kind of nice so we just get to focus on doing um learning this really neat stitch so just want to share that with you all right unless there are any other questions oh no that's not what we want. I'm trying to do too many things at once here, folks. Here we go. Let me see. <sighs> um, let's see. Is 6 p.m. UK time tomorrow, please, Ali, for the intro session? Um, no, it's 4 p.m. at my time. So 4, 5, yes, 9 p.m. It's going to be 9 p.m. in the UK, Pat. 9 p.m. To 4 p.m. on the East Coast, then add on five hours because the clocks haven't changed yet. Our clocks haven't changed and your clocks haven't changed. So you're currently adding on five hours. So, yeah, 9 p.m. is a bit late. Sorry about that. Um, but we've got quite a lot of East Coast people, too. Um, Candace said, did you ever do the glue session? Um, no, we didn't do the glue session. I'm just um, putting the glue session up as a kind of um, post rather than a live thing, Candace. Good question. Um, yay. Yes, Paula says she thinks she'll make several of these. Yeah, you will, honestly. Um, Donna says, do you use book board? No, no book board. So we just use watercolour paper. Don't tell anyone this is a sneak peek. We're going to use a watercolour paper cover. We're going to cover it with paper and then reinforce it a little bit. So it's like a kind of, kind of soft cover. But don't tell anyone. That was just a little sneak peek for you. So Angela says she might be in her pajamas on Friday. That's fine. You could be in your pajamas as long as you have a nice cup of tea or something. You'll be all set or a little glass of wine. All right. Anyone? Um, yes, Kelly's asking for the supply list. Yes, it, we send you the supply list, but I think it's also on the website too. Um, before you sign up, you can look at the supply list just to make sure that, um, you know, it's not too onerous on you. You have the supplies. So, um, all right, folks, I think that is it for today. We are bang on the hour. It's a miracle. I will not be here next week because it's challenge week. So I shall be over in the other Facebook group uh, for challenge folks. But it seems like most of you will be there. So that is great. Um, how did I, you, I'm going to show you how to do that flower cover. If you're talking about this one, Maurice, um, I will show you how to do it in the challenge. It's easy peasy, honestly, easy peasy. All right, folks. Thank you, Joanne. You're so sweet. I can't think of a better way to spend my Thursday morning either than hanging out with you folks. So thank you for joining me. Um, and I will see you back here in two weeks time. Have a wonderful and creative week. And if you make the tea bag book, Remember to post it on Instagram and Facebook. Um, yes, Gloria, the, for the challenge, there's a separate Facebook group. Um, and when you sign up, you'll get a link to join that. So, all right, folks. Yay. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Lisa. Thanks for joining us for the first time. Uh, we will catch you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>